in simple terms, grass food. Every eight weeks at least, you need to feed your lawn with a fertilizer. All day long today, I'm dealing with leather jackets. <laughs> Good morning, my lawn lovers. Here we are again, Rich Lawns, checking in with you guys, and it's a pleasure to do so. Right then, folks. So, Monday, I've been talking to you an awful lot about how important a fertilizer is. You've got to get a fertilizer on your lawn at least every eight weeks. So fertilizer, what's the big deal? In simple terms, lawn food. You need to give your lawn some food more importantly you need to get the right fertilizer at the right time of year if you're struggling with that get your comments coming in to me rich lawns i know a few of you have already regarding fertilizer so i'll be sending you a response later on today but i have got the fertilizer on board so i'm going to go through it with you now so this time of year folks because we're in may you need to be getting yourself down a fertilizer just like this, an 11.55 plus 8%. If you want me to go into further detail on the breakdown of the 11.55 plus 8%, get your comments coming in to Rich Lawns. I've also spoken to you about the importance of getting yourself one of these, a nice handheld spreader. Okay, right, let's go put this down. I've done an awful lot of work on this customer's lawn already, and it's fair to say, it is pretty much coming into the wow factor. Well on target for the summer. It's gonna look absolutely lush. I've got a nice fertilizer with me that I'm gonna put down now. Let me just spin this round and you can see how lush the garden is looking already, considering we're only the first week in May. So just have a gander. Have a look at that for how lush and green it's coming already. That is not just down to me, the customer obviously comes out and cuts the grass regularly. But so far this year, we've had every eight weeks, the correct fertilizer has gone down. I've also done one course of aeration and I've also scarified this lawn. Hence there's a couple of patches here definitely need to get that reseeded as well on this visit but absolutely in my opinion anyway and I'm sure you will agree it is looking good right let's get this fertilizer down good morning my lawn lovers right this particular customer and I'm gonna spin the camera around in a minute so you can have a gander they had so much moss on their lawn, which obviously I killed with a total moss killer, Sierrasol. Came back in Scarified. Off memory, I think we ran the Scarifier over this lawn around six times. It was so infested with moss that we went all the way down to soil, all the way down, the whole lawn completely down to soil. I then came back shortly after that and reseeded the whole lawn. Today I'm here to deal with the weeds and to put a fertilizer down. But let me just spin this round and you can see how much progress it's made since the seeds went down around four weeks ago. So like I say, this, this whole lawn was reduced to soil. Uh, we have still got some patchy areas but the grass is coming through nicely. But what I'm here to deal with today is they've got an awful lot of weeds and I've spoken to you about this before. Weeds are now back in growth. So with that in mind, they are very, very responsive to weed treatment. talking a lot about fertilizer 
what's the point what is it in simple terms grass food every eight weeks at least you need to feed your lawn with a fertilizer any problems in terms of what type of fertilizer to use get your comments coming into rich lawns okay let's get this down Good morning my lawn lovers. All day long today, I'm dealing with leather jackets. What are leather jackets? They are a garden pest, sometimes hidden in your lawn, sometimes visible, but they eat the grass from below the soil. And what you'll find if it's not treated, you'll get decimated areas of your lawn. There are lots of telltale signs that might tell you that you do have leather jackets. Have you seen a lot of bird activity on your lawn? You might also, if you're not at home and in a position to be looking out of your window all day long to check for birds, could be that you've got a lot of puncture hole marks on your lawn where their beak has gone into the lawn to eat them. The customer that I'm with now has had leather jackets for the past 12 months and it is advisable that if you have had them, you need to treat them for at least three years. As it's quite overcast and quite cold today, when I spin the camera around, unfortunately, you're not going to see any. But this customer did see them a couple of nights ago on his patio. And for the leather jackets that were on the patio, those that didn't make it back to the lawn actually died on the patio. He has subsequently swept them up. And this is the lawn that I'm going to be treating right now. I'm not going to be treating beyond the orange makeshift netting. The customer has put some new seeds down there. So this is the product here, folks. Nemesis J with nematodes. That's what you need to be treating your lawn if you have leather jackets. Now then, I came to see this customer last week. They were due their eight weekly course of fertilizer treatment. However, upon immediately being on their lawn, I noticed there had been an awful lot of bird activity. I questioned the customer and they confirmed even they were surprised at the amount of birds that they'd seen on their lawn. So I told the customer without any question, You've had a lot of pests on the lawn, leather jackets. The customer said, yep, a couple of years ago. Let's get onto the customer's lawn and we'll go through what the telltale signs are so you can identify if you've got this pest on your lawn. It is a pest that needs treating with. So if you don't physically see the birds on the lawn, have a look at this. You can see the puncture marks. These puncture marks here, they're all over the lawn they have been caused by the bird's beak digging into the soil to eat the, the, uh, the leather jackets but don't be thinking well if the birds are eating them not a problem the problem will go away that's not the case and you can see areas of the lawn that are becoming decimated right then folks backpack on full of nemesis j I'm going to spray the whole lawn and then we've got to move on to the next customer. questions get in touch with me rich lawns whilst you're firing in your question don't forget to subscribe speak to you soon good morning folks all right then check this out it's an absolute pleasure to be back with a customer a very good customer 
they happen to have a very big lawn. It was heavily, heavily infested with moss. First part of the uh, operation, so to speak, was to get the total moss killer down, the Sierra Sol, let that do its thing. And then we came back and did three runs of scarification in different directions across the lawn. This particular lawn happens to pr uh, produce the record in terms of how many bags of moss were collected. In fact, off memory, I think it was 195 bags of moss, dead grass and debris. So I am back here today to put down some fertilizer. Right, so without further ado, let me spin the camera around and you can see the results and it looks absolutely amazing considering it was only scarified not so long ago so the main lawn over there if i'm honest with you was quite light on moss but we can see how new grass is already coming through looking lovely when i spin it around though this area over here was heavily heavily infested with moss but again new grass is coming through there could be uh, some reseeding that needs to be done over here i'll speak to the customer about that also this area over here you know this was pretty pretty bad to be fair absolutely heavily infested with moss that's looking lovely and then the lawn over here again this was heavily heavily infested with moss and we can see the patches there from scarification don't worry about that that's all normal again some potential overseeding required here again i'll speak to the customer but i'm i'm very pleased considering we're only a couple of weeks into may i think i've mentioned this before as you guys will probably understand and realize april was a pretty pretty cold month this year well below average days of snow several several evenings and early morning frosts uh, the colder the soil the less growth it is going to produce and therefore will not delay the recovery process but certainly slow it down so let's get some fertilizer down on this lawn Good morning folks, it's Friday. In my area, Milton Keynes, Northamptonshire area, last night we had torrential rain. And as per luck, my diary is chock-a-block today with scarifications. Ground is very wet, not waterlogged, not saturated, but wet. So I'm just gonna show you the progress. So that lawn has been scarified, raked up and bagged up. Equally, this lawn has been scarified, raked up, bagged up. So we're onto the main lawns now. There's uh, Carl, he's dropped his rake, so that's not a good thing. So we can see what's happened over here. 
you know, the grass. I did ask the customer to cut the grass, but obviously under these conditions, he's not had an opportunity to. So when the grass is already quite long, it makes the situation even more challenging. But nonetheless, this is what's been achieved. So me and my colleague Carl are now gonna crack on and get rates up. Diary today, jam-packed with scarification jobs. But that torrential rain, has meant that I'm still on the first job of this morning, turned up at half eight, it's now half 12. Um, and it's just not providing the right results. It's not, you know, a total loss, but I'm not happy. I'm gonna have to rebook this job in for next week and the other jobs that I've got lined up. So I'll spin this round anyway and you can see thus far what has been achieved. So this lawn has been scarified, raked up, bagged up, but the wet grass has meant that the scarifier hasn't really, in my opinion, achieved what he should have achieved. But that's absolutely not a problem, folks. I do need to stress here that uh, all my customers are valued customers and you know it might just well well it's definitely going to be a case of we've got to start again but not today we'll finish up we'll do what we can now then folks i've had a busy week hope you've had a busy week it's always a pleasure to get the uh, the videos out to you if you haven't subscribed rich lawns it's friday get online right then let's have a quick recap on this week spoken an awful lot about fertilizing your lawn every eight weeks it's really important fertilizer being grass food in its most simplistic terms puts a lot of nutrients onto your lawn spoken an awful lot again we're in may we've spoken about lawn pests particularly now leather jackets are very active they almost look like uh, if you will a dark brown worm a leather jacket eats the grass underneath the soil at root level. The biggest issue with having leather jackets is just thinking the problem will go away and deal with itself, it won't. Yes, the birds will eat an awful lot of leather jackets, but don't ignore the problem. Get somebody like me to come out and deal with it. Spoken an awful lot about scarification. Now is the time to do it. Scarification isn't just about the removal of moss. It's about the removal of dead grass, thatch, debris. You've seen lots of my videos. You've seen all the evidence. You've seen all the bags that I've been collecting. In terms of getting your lawn ready for the summer, in terms of breathing new life into the lawn, scarification, the results are amazing.